Let's talk about money. We don't talk about money in Germany! But people are constantly talking about the fact that the government is spending too much or too little money on one or another issue. That's normal. The government is always criticized. But Germans as such don't talk about money, at least not their own. As the saying goes, über Geld spricht man nicht. You don't talk about money. But how are others supposed to know how expensive Germany is? Well, talk about money. But not about your own money. All right. Not about your own money. That's funny. Germans don't talk about their income. Why not? We don't know exactly, but we suspect the following. Firstly, people want to avoid envy, because if you get on well with family and friends, you don't want envy to arise from talking about money. This may also be one reason why the really rich in Germany rarely brag out their money. The Albrecht brothers, the owners of Aldi, were hardly ever seen in public. Even Mr. Schwarz from Needle hardly ever makes an appearance. And when the rich do appear in public, it is in a business context or in the context of charity. People also like their privacy. Some people don't want to talk about it because family members of wealthy people have been kidnapped from time to time or people like to break in when there is probably something to get. In fact, half of couples do not know exactly what their partners earn. But it is also the case that wealth is not a goal that the average German pursues. The American dream from dishwasher to millionaire is not so widespread in this country. People want to earn well and have a good life, but that can end with a home and two-week annual vacation. You don't have to get rich and give up your private life for that. On the contrary, the majority of Germans have a wide range of leisure activities from voluntary work. This is another reason why Germans like to plan appointments. You like to swim along, be in the middle of the society on a pair with the others. It was also unusual to state a salary in job advertisements. Personal managers were happy for applicants to state their desired salary, but in Germany it was not possible to say what salary range they would be paid. Well, for jobs in public sector, the pay band was usually included and everyone could see what that meant. Even some employment contracts will still contain a confidentiality clause stating that the salary should not be discussed. However, this is no longer the case, at least not since the ruling by the State Labour Court in Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. If colleagues ask, perhaps because another salary discussion is due soon, you can of course say what you earn. But that is also a topic that people don't like to talk about. That Schulden has the same root as guilt, schuld, or being found guilty, schuldig, in court. Debt, therefore, has a negative connotation and is a bad thing. This means that if you are in debt, you have done something wrong. That is not necessarily true, of course. For example, anyone who builds or buys a house usually have debts, but we prefer to call them real estate loans, immobilienkredit. That sounds much better. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about money in Germany. How do we start? Today we pay with a euro, but the idea of this common currency is not so new. Emperor Charles V introduced the imperial guilder, also known as the apple guilder, in the Holy Roman Empire in 1551. This had the imperial orb on one side and a regional emblem of the coin sovereign on the other. Pretty much every prince in the Holy Roman Empire had the right to mint his own coins, but this had different values and different amounts of precious metal. And in order to have a comparable standard, the imperial guider of 72 Kreuzer was introduced, with a minimum content of gold. In addition to the Galder and Kreuzers, there were various other coins such as a Heller, Pfennig or Batzen in southern Germany and Groschen or Schillings in northern Germany as well as a Thaler and other denominations and coins. 
When the German Empire was proclaimed in 1871, the Mark was introduced. The Mark is actually an old German weight of about half a pound, 8 ounces or 16 lots. The Cologne Mark would be equivalent to 234 gram today. The mark of the German Empire was gold-backed and the small coin was defined as the Pfennig, a mark of 100 Pfennigs. After the loss of the First World War and in the course of the Great Depression, the value increasingly declined and the Reichsmark and Rentenmark were introduced to stabilize it. The exchange rate of the old mark or paper mark into a Reichsmark or Rentenmark, the letter was issued by the Rentenbank, was 1 billion to 1. Here again the difference between the German billion with 12 zeros and the American billion with only 9 zeros. I have already explained the background in this video about numbers. The Reichsmark and Rentenmark were retained in the occupation zones after the Second World War. The German Mark, Deutsche Mark, was then introduced in the Federal Republic in 1948. The German Central Bank of the Soviet occupation zone also issued a Deutsche Mark until 1964. Then the Mark der Deutschen Notenbank from 1964 to 1976 and then the Mark of the German Democratic Republic. This was also divided into 100 pfennigs. With the reunification, the German Mark, Deutsche Mark, became the common currency. The GDR Mark was exchanged at different exchange rates for different amounts between 1 to 1 and 5 to 1. The European Union, or the European Monetary Union, had also tested a common currency before the Euro or implemented it for calculations, the EQ, short for European Currency Unit. This was replaced by the Euro in 1999. From January the 1st, 1999, the Euro was already book money and from January the 1st, 2002, the Euro was also introduced as a means of payment. The exchange rate between the German Mark and the Euro is 1.95583 or approximately 2 marks for 1 euro. Theoretically, it is still possible to pay with Deutsche Mark today. And years ago, there were occasional campaigns in which stores deliberately accepted old coins and bills. If you still have old Deutsche Mark coins or bills, you can exchange them at the Bundesbank. But how expensive is Germany now? Well, that depends on where you come from. For example, the Swiss near the German border like to do their daily shopping for fruit, vegetables, meat and other everyday goods in Germany because it is much cheaper here. They even get their VAT back. Conversely, Germans sometimes buy houses in Denmark, Poland or the Netherlands. Fuel tourism is also very popular in border regions. For example, diesel is much cheaper in Poland and the Czech Republic, slightly cheaper in Austria, but more expensive in the Netherlands, Belgium, France or Denmark. Petrol, on the other hand, is cheaper in Belgium than in Germany. Let's take a look at how much the euro is currently worth. The current date here is the 25th of February 2024. Something like this changes from day to day. Another option is the Big Mac index. This measures the value of a Big Mac in the local currency. When we see this, we understand that the Swiss shop in Germany, but the Eurozone is seen as a whole. In the McDonald's app, it is currently 6 Euro. That puts us ahead of Sweden. So it's pretty expensive. In contrast, perhaps we should look at the minimum wage. An EU directive says that the minimum wage should be 60% of the average gross wage. In the EU, 22 out of 27 members have a statutory minimum wage. The fact that Switzerland is not shown on the map is due to the fact that 
there is no statutory minimum wage for the whole of Switzerland, but rather minimum wages that are staggered according to the sector. Luxembourg has the highest minimum wage on the map. However, if you put this in relation to the purchasing power in the respective country, Germany is close to the top. If you look at the minimum wage in some countries around the world, the minimum wage in Germany is roughly on pair with New Zealand or twice as the minimum wage in the USA. And of course, minimum wage means the minimum and cannot be undercut by someone might get a tip. The purchasing power standard is of course also an interesting value. Germany is slightly above the EU average. Switzerland, Iceland, Norway are even higher than the EU countries or the candidate countries. If we look at the comparison of price levels, we can see that there are so many different areas that are sometimes more expensive and sometimes cheaper. If you add everything up, the consumer spending by private household is 46% higher in Switzerland, in Iceland by 44%, 31% in Denmark and Israel, in Australia by 26% and the USA by 23% and in New Zealand by 21%. France is roughly on pair. In Italy, Japan and Korea spending is around 10% cheaper. In Cyprus, Mexico and Costa Rica it is around 18% less. It is only half as expensive in Colombia and 64% less in Turkey. If you want to go on vacation, you can see here where hotels and restaurants charge more or less. Again, Switzerland is at the top of the list and Albania is particularly cheap. If it costs more here than elsewhere, you have to earn more here. In 2023, German had a median income of 44,407 euro, meaning that half of the working population earned less and the other half earned more. The average income was even 53,318 euro, which means that there are some very high earners who drive the average upwards. If we now offset the minimum wage, which should make up 60% of the medium income, 60% of 44,407 euro is 26,644 euros 20. In 2023, the minimum wage was still 12 euro. 40 hours multiplied with 12 euro multiplies with 52 weeks is 24,960 euro. The EU has a minimum wage directive that stipulates that 60% must be reached by the end of 2024. The minimum wage will probably have to increase somewhat there. That is why the trade union representatives on the minimum wage commission voted against the current minimum wage and the increases because the limit has not been reached. But this is only the income earned by a working person and not what arrives at home because these working people may have a spouse and children or there may even be two working people in one household. Let's take a look at the net equivalent income which also takes into account children and young people in the household. Here the median was around 25,000 euro in 2022 and the average income was 28,601 euro. If you look at the inflation in the recent years, inflation is pretty much in line with the average of EU countries, peaking at 11.6% in October 2022 and falling again since then. Unfortunately, inflation was higher than wage increases, so there were less left over after the end of the salary. So, okay, now we've looked at statical averages. But what does this mean for the individual or the family? If we consider that you should spend around a third of your income on rent and utilities, we have a median income of around 1,221 per month in 2023. In Germany, we always talk about cold rent or warm rent, heating costs, have fallen slightly in 2023 compared to 2022, but other components such as sewage charge, waste disposal and others have risen. 
resulting in an average of 3 euro 45 per square meter. This should be around 25% of the rent, which should correspond to a basic rent of 10 euro 35. On average, that would be enough for 88 square meters, but only on average. Small apartments are more expensive per square meter, and then it depends on the city. Munich has rents almost twice as high as the average, and Berlin and Frankfurt are also over 17 euro on average. I think we'll end this video at this point and take a look at which professional groups earn how much in the second part. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you next time. Another little calculation. If we work hard and save money to get rich, how long does it take? If you put 1000 euro aside every day and we can guess what you would have to earn to put 1000 euro aside every day, you would be a millionaire after just under three years. If we saved even more to become a billionaire, we would have to save 1000 euro every day for around 2750 years.